What's up, man? How are you? Good, good. Enjoying another hot summer here in, man. The, in the city. I heard you were going to pick up a trailer or something. Did you get it, man, or a boat or something? No, 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 no. Looking for a travel trailer for uh, our daughter's softball. softball stuff so we can hang out a little bit better, save a buck or two. Okay, I got you. So, um, the first two episodes of today, man, we started off with a bang. Dustin was cool, yeah. man, from The Becoming. I didn't know he played Project 86. That was cool for me. That was yeah. a new new one. Um, I'll have to go back and listen to some of that stuff. And then, of course, we had Jordan from Texas Tech stop by, yeah. a great wide receiver. Yeah, that dude can play, man. I don't ever want to ever have to play against him, whatever. Not that it's going to happen at 37, <laughs> but I don't want to play that guy, man. So, um, but we've got some more traits for you. We have one, uh, Dan, I told you about this. Yeah. And we've been itching for this one for a long time. We wanted to make sure the timing was right. Um, there's two gentlemen I've been listening to. And by the way, they're still scrapping young bucks, but I've been listening to them for quite some time. Um, some of the best, uh, in my opinion, hip hop artists yeah. in the game, and they go beyond that too. Yeah. Um, there's a gentleman named Verbs, formerly known as Noda Verbs. I've been listening to him since I literally started to find out how cool music was. Um, the syllabus, the album, I had it on repeat. I burnt through a CD playing it so much. And of course, Pedity <laughs> also yeah. is, is going to be on tonight. Uh, I started listening to him during I'm a Vet, and it helped me through a lot of times and positive and always coming up with new things and just constantly keeps morphing his sound um, to. I, when you just think you can't get any better, he just gets better. So yep. two amazing artists coming together to make a little project album called Village King Side A, yep. man. So just uh, some of the best rap you're going to hear. And what I like about yep. it is there's typically something more positive to it. Yep. Uh, you know, you can play it anywhere, right? It's good message, yep. but it's also clean and just stuff the world needs to hear. So I don't want to waste any more time. I want to get yep. right down to it and bring on Verbs and Pedity. How you doing, guys? What's up? What's up, brother? Hey, Josh. What's going on, fellas? Man, oh, to my hope. Excited for this one. Thank, thank you guys for joining us this evening. It can't, uh, uh, can't be more appreciative for you yeah, to man. be on. No, man, it's super cool. Super cool to be here, man, for real. I love it, man. So we've got some questions we're on past you guys. I'll start with one. Uh, this question is directed for you, Pedity, and then Verbs, uh, Dane has one for you. So I'm going to get into it. So take me back, man. I've listened to you again. Uh, so, so many different styles man and from i'm a vet to, to monster to the way you're doing with even with catch these hands and now with the village king such a great just plethora of styles man i know you go beyond that there's soul there's rock influences but yeah. take me back man to the very very start man when did you first start becoming like when did you get the bug to be an artist how old were you and when did this all begin for you you know uh, this, that's a crazy that's a great question man it's crazy i was like 13 13 years old, I was working in a record store. I was huge in the hip hop, man, like, like 11, 12 years old. And I used to go to a record store called DJ's Records in Jacksonville, Florida. And there was a guy, um, of course, everybody called him DJ's, was DJ's Records. But um, uh, I started, um, I knew everything about hip hop. And he used to come in and people would ask about music. And then I would be able to tell them about it. And and I spent so much time in the um, in the record store. And he he started making all these jokes. He was like, "Man, you you come in here so much. I'm gonna put you to work." And so one day, uh, someone asked about a record, and they used to call me D. So he said, um, "Ask D." And then after that, he was like, uh, "He was like, hey, uh, D, I'm going to the store. Watch the store. St watch the store for me." So he was like, you need to get behind the counter so it could be official and everything. And he didn't know he was grooming me for to actually work in the record store. And then he got back. He was like, no, stay. He's like, I was like, we sold this many records. And this is us, maybe 14 at the time. And um, I learned a lot about the music industry working in a record store because back then it was like mom and pop's record stores where all of the major artists, when they had concerts, they had to come through. And um, and do uh, CD signings and stuff. I mean, um, yeah, cassettes and, and, and yeah. posters and signings, and all of the label reps and everybody wanted to be in my good graces. Here I am, a kid, 13, 14 years old, and um, his name was Jerry West, the owner of the store. We ca I call him Uncle Jerry, and Uncle Jerry would go, "Don't ask me about that hip hop stuff. Ask D." <laughs> you know, so I was like a go to person. <laughs> And that kept me out of the streets a lot. I did, I did get involved in some things. I couldn't, I couldn't stay in the record store forever. And a lot of my friends got into the streets and I got into that. But for the most part, I always tell people that um, music saved my life, but Jesus saved my soul. I love mm -hmm. that. I love that, man. And man. Um, yeah. And um, I, I was actually doing the beat. I was the beatboxer 
for some guys in school. <laughs> and I remember it was funny because that was during the time where everybody was wearing like, um, like doing the kid and play thing and everybody was wearing matching clothes and stuff like that. <laughs> and I used to always be the beatbox guy, but the, the rappers always got the girls. And I, yeah. and I never, it was funny because I remember one day I was mad and I was like, I came home to my mom and I was like, my mama write me a rap because rappers get all the girls. Write <laughs> <laughs> you a rap, baby. I love and that. So, Dane has those literally. pants still. Dane, yeah, you got those Kim Play pants, rapping. don't you, Dane? Oh, yeah. yeah. Parachutes, everything. Parachute pants, everything. I got it all They're back. They're back yeah, anyway. So he's, he's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, um, so then just fast forward a little bit. Um, I started rapping and I got good at it and stuff. And then um, um, I was pretty much fast forward a little bit. I was pretty much kind of next in my city. Like, you know, there's a lot of guys coming out of uh, of the state uh, you know two live crew and and poison clan and, and mm-hmm. all these all these artists man was really doing their thing and there were some guys from our city named um named they call them the uh, tri- uh uh trill deal boys the uh, okay chill deal chill deal boys chill deal boys could not get a deal to save their life they tried and tried and they were great artists and they could not and they tried and tried and tried and then they moved to that they moved to atlanta changed their name. And I remember a friend of mine, he came back to me. He said, hey, this is our first single. It had the airbrush. And he says, I want you to play this in the record store twenty every time you hear. And that was 95 South. They changed their name to 95 South and the single was Whoop, There It Is. Okay. I helped, okay. I helped, break, I helped break that single in Jacksonville, well, at least in my area. And everybody's going for that record. And I remember being in the streets and Every time I was at the record store, something would happen in my hood. Somebody would get shot or something crazy would happen. And they'd be like, yo, you know, what have you heard about what happened? I'm like, yo, I was at the record store, you know. Mm-hmm. But then I, I got involved in stuff in the streets. And I just, I was like, you know, I need to do something different in my life. Uh, granted, I'm still a teenager, but, you know, getting involved with things and everybody, you know, friends of mine going to prison. My um. I was in, in high school. One of my rap partners went to prison. Our DJ went to prison. Like all this crazy stuff was happening. And I remember there was a lady that lived two houses down from me. She used to always tell me, God's got a calling on your life. You know, it's something mm-hmm. about you. And I'm just like, man, this lady crazy, man. I'm about <laughs> but she always just, she never was afraid of it. Was, I always had respect for her because she never was afraid of the dudes in the streets. And she used to always witness to us and tell us about God and stuff. And so, she asked me to go to church with her one day and I started going. And, you know, during that time, there was a couple of people knew I was a rapper and it was like, you have to leave that, you have to leave that rap stuff alone. You know, that's the devil, you know, <laughs> like, all right. You know, I, you know and, 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 and when I gave my life to the Lord um, and I, I said the sinner's prayer, I just wanted Jesus, man. I just wanted a change in my life. I really wanted a, a, a dramatic change in my life. And, um, and I remember the, the church had a, um skate they had a skate party and at the skate party they was playing hip-hop and it was like banging and i was like man i thought these people were saved i thought they loved the lord they <laughs> playing rap. so i went up to the dj booth and actually our the dj was our deacon so i was like what is this y'all playing and he was like oh man this sfc soldiers for christ man and then he played dynamic twins and he plays a couple other uh uh jamming uh, gospel rap and i went to a, a christian bookstore and I would spend hours in this bookstore, man, just soaking up the music. Because back then, they used to let you play the CDs, play the tapes. You could spend as long as you want. On the kiosks, <laughs> man, on little machines, right? Because I used yeah. to that too. Yeah, 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 man. yeah. 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 And then, man, just I plug just in. spent so much time. And I made up my mind at that time. I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And, I, and by that time, fast forward, I had to be like 19. I gave my life to the Lord. And I remember when I decided to be a gospel rapper, I had stacks of, of, of written raps. And the Lord spoke to me clearly and said, throw them away. And I was a baby Christian, man. I was trying to negotiate with God. God, can I just clean up these raps? It's a lot of raps. <laughs> and the Lord was like, if you throw them away, you'll never look back. You'll never regret looking mm. back. And I've been rapping for the Lord ever since. Um, <laughs> that was that was 93, 94, 95. Um, I was a shout out to a. Uh, Jeff from uh, DDC, a group called DDC, Grape Tree Records. 
uh, Jeff kind of discovered me from that aspect. We opened up for his group called D, uh, Jeff. Um, he was in a group called DDC and he was like, man, you're amazing. You sound, you know, your performance and this is another, this had to be 1995. And he was like, I'm on a label called Great Tree Records and we're doing a compilation. We'd love for you to be on it. And it came out in 96 and it just, just took off. Man, there. That's uh, amazing, I, man. It's crazy. Yeah, this, I, I the remember, history. I rem- yeah, I remember listening to, I remember recording my album, my, my debut album. And at, by that time, Goatee had took off, Goatee Records, Toby mm-hmm. Max label, and Grits was on it, and you know, Tehran's from my city. And and um, and I heard this guy, man, it was like, Ooh, we're on our way to the studio, me and this cat named Mo Henderson, shout out Maurice Henderson. Um, and he said, man, you got to hear this. And he played me Know the Verbs. Yep, now, everybody yep. always gives me props for, for my for my for my legacy and how long I've been doing music. But I was working on my debut album. Verbs was already on his second record, so he was mm-hmm. already on the action figure record. So for me, taking it full circle, like not only is my brother, but I'm a fan too. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, man, it's 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 just you know I moved to Nashville in um, 2004, producing for Grits and. And uh, man, God has just been really doing some big yeah, things. Yeah, man. Man, I love it, man. I, I, I'm with Dane. Before you take question for verbs, I'm with you because I remember when I first heard. I was telling him off the air when time for class. I got still. I could still. The first time I heard, it, I was like, "You hear that? You hear it come in." And then when you when you drop Laquita, I was like, "Dude, this is like my my summer hit right here, man." And for like, <laughs> yeah. and I just never stopped playing it. Like 20 years later, I'm still playing it. So I just this is the style, Dane. I'm gonna let you get into that one because uh, you, you got you got to take that one <laughs> number two for well, yeah, verbs. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is for verbs. Um, now, through your career, all the all the venues you've played, all the music you've created, um, the good vibes that you've brought to this industry, is there something, you know, whenever you're traveling around doing your thing, is there an event or a gig or anything that kind of maybe one or two gigs that kind of stick out in the forefront of your mind that that you want to talk about that that will always be there when somebody says, hey, what what is something that we, we can remember you from? Is there a... Uh, an event that sticks out for you? Yeah, man, that's a great question. Um, so there's, there's actually two. So one of them, um, you know, before I was doing my own solo stuff, I traveled mm-hmm. pretty much with with a group called Grits. Um, that's how I got to Nashville. I met those guys a long time ago when they were background dancers for a group called DC Talk. And so that's how those, they were the only guys I knew when I came to Nashville, um, hopped out on the road with them when I first got here. And we were doing a concert it was a music festival in georgia somewhere we're doing uh we're doing in the middle of a song and all of a sudden uh bonafide from the group from grits stops the music because the paramedics came over and they said that there was a guy that had passed out in the crowd and they're trying to basically see if they have any vital signs on them so we just paused stopped everything um we ended up letting the crowd know what was happening and just had a moment everything was paused and we we prayed for the guy because wow. at that point, he, he was showing no signs, no signs of life. Wow. And um, so maybe two or three minutes, uh, we were praying. And then um, the guy comes back and apparently they were able to get a pulse again. And, you know, the guy went off and he was he was fine. But I just remember that that one. I mean, the way we had to pause everything abruptly. But then mm-hmm. two, you know, the story that we got is like, hey, we got to shut it all down because this guy's not breathing. Yeah. But then not only that, actually. They put the guy in the ambulance again. They got vital signs going again. So he he recovered. Um, number two was there was a good time, um, a good span of time when the action figure album came out mm. to where I was doing a lot of um, I'll call it like musicianary work. So we were we were going out overseas. I was traveling with my guy, DJ Madge, who's um, who was uh, my road. DJ love him. Go to motorcycle, yeah. bro. Love it, man. Yeah, love exactly. It. <laughs> exactly. So we would be going into these these places. Um, and one time we had a trip in the middle of uh, Kosovo. Um, we were with the missions group and they had to have like security, like with our group, just so when we were in the streets, you know, because this is when there was a um, a war going on right there at the border. Mm-hmm. The crusade concert night that we had was in the middle of what looked like an abandoned soccer stadium. And uh, the, sa- the stadium had these concrete bleachers. Um, so we're in there performing and all of a sudden, you know, Madge stops the music 
And, uh, you know, he pulls me off to the stage. He's like, man, I couldn't let you, uh, I couldn't let you keep going because the, the people were breaking off the concrete pieces from the stands and then throwing them at the stage. And I looked on the side of the stage and there's like these huge, big old chunks of like cement that they had been throwing at the stage all night. And he wow. could see them and hear them. Wow. I didn't see any of it. We were just up there, you know, rocking like we normally would. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that was that was a that was that was a little bit of a, a, a an eerie moment. Um, just because it was the whole thing was dark. There were no stadium lights or anything like that. It was just flickers of like cigarette lighters and all that in the crowd. Uh, wow. So, but yeah, but it ended up being great. We did that like three yeah. or four other times on that trip. So. Yeah. I guess yeah. Any any time there's like death or near death experiences, involved, I got you. Like, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I got it's you. It's to be memorable. So man, so I'm thinking about. <laughs> so let me let me give you a, a a backdrop of it's it's so neat when you're talking about DJ Madge, obviously coffee. You know, going back to bona fide. Uh, it, it's funny the other day I have to share this story with my daughter. You know, their their TikTok is their world. They don't know anything except on TikTok. <laughs> she walks up and she goes, "Dad, you ever heard?" She's like, "You ever heard the song?" And it, you know, it comes in my life. Be like, I was like, "Girl." I've been listening to songs since before you even thought of. Don't even talk to me about that. Yeah, yeah. Talk about, check out right now. <laughs> cool. It's so funny. I was like, man, when, when you guys are talking about some of the influences, man, when like the backup dance for DC Talk and when you're rolling with DJ Madge, like that whole the the influences of what you guys have done. And again, there's just this, yep. this this group. You guys, I, I think of even like gospel gangsters a little bit. Just a scene of music, right? Where it's yeah. like good a great time a coming of age of music where it's okay to be good t-bone it's okay to be great and also yeah. still have a message that people need to hear it that's what you guys did man so yeah. when i think about th th this one's for both of you and petty i'll have you go with in verbs this next one the way you guys have influenced us influenced my life my family there's got to be and, and this is probably going to be hard to narrow it down petty you go first and then verbs what's that if you could though across all genres or platforms what's been that biggest artistic influence on you and petty if you want to go first on that i think i think at the, at the time for me it was um goody mob the, okay. um, the group got goody mob uh outcast goody mob they had them they were from the south they had a message um me being from Florida, there was, I knew what I wanted to say, but we had New York influence, we had LA influence, you know. But then for me, I wanted to slow the music down. A lot of the music from Florida was, um, you know, really, uh, uh, really upbeat, high paced, you know, music. Mm -hmm. And I knew what I wanted to say as a believer, and I knew I wanted to tell my testimony, but I didn't want to tell it in a, in a New York style or or west coast style and when um when outcast came and goody mob came in mm -hmm. 95 96 mm -hmm. they were soulful it was southern and then they were speaking their message and i kind of utilized that as a template mm -hmm. to if you listen to the first album still alive you'll hear that influence on um tell me about your floor about how, how, you know what i'm saying it's like i do yeah it's like they just gave, it's like, I, I came from the era of originality. So I was want to be original, but every artist has that person that they look up to, to find that template to build what they want to say. Mm -hmm. so, so so at that time, I would definitely say um, a Goody Mob and Outkast and that Dungeon family where it yeah. was Southern music with a message. Um, it wasn't the... It wasn't the gospel message, but it was, it was, if you listen to that, that it was close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. It was speaking about the positivity and then hearing, no yeah, SFC, uh, you know, um, uh, dynamic twins. And it, there were people telling their testimony for their music. And it's like, for me, how do I bring the originality of who I am um, to the, to the, uh, to the, the, the sound and it worked and it was different. It was it what there wasn't really much out there southern hip hop wise that was saying some of the things that I was saying on um the first album from Still Alive. And the reason why the album was called Still Alive was because I had left the streets and I spent so much time at the church and so much time in the studio. There were rumors going out good rumors going around in my neighborhood that I got killed. Oh, man. And I got I got killed in in a shootout, and so that's why if you listen to the the if you listen to the intro, that's what I said. Thought I was dead, but now y'all, I'm still alive. 
Still oh, yeah. screaming, buck them down, send them to hellfire. Now I'm, yeah. I ain't bucking guns no more. I'm bucking down the devil in the spirit realm. Yeah. So that's, what, that's why the album's called <laughs> Still Alive, first album. And that's why I'm saying what I'm saying in the first um in in the first track so people gonna very go back familiar. To yeah yeah oh yeah man i'm very familiar like i said i, I used to think it better than me so i'm letting you do it man <laughs> but yeah, yeah very familiar uh i i read that story a little sip of that and i thought that was kind of where that came from man but yeah, yeah. i can i can see that how you took that um and then verb before you go one of the things that they have always talked about i think i was watching uh i think it was randy from red it's a he's a rock band you guys know who red is oh yeah and like red, they, and they, and they were talking about they're breaking it down how he's like hey man you have this message that you use but you're also a rock star right and like you guys talking about being rap star he's like you can also say what you need to say and it, i keep going back to you. you can be great you can be at the top of your field you can say outcast in one breath and then you know village king in another breath and it's okay you don't have to just because your message is tailored you don't have to take a step back or, or, or be less. And I just yeah, love yeah. that, that you guys are yeah. literally some of the best rappers that you're ever going to hear, but you Definitely. say what you want to say and just authentic and genuine, it makes it even better. You're not, you yeah. know, I just, anyway, verbs, if yeah. I'm going to ask you, man, who's been your biggest influence, man, on an, as an artist for you, you know? Yeah. Um, man, I think it's, it's always hard to point to one particular influence, but I'll, I'll start by saying, I think in general, like just the idea of what hip hop was, you know, early 80s when it really started to kind of sweep across yeah. the globe really but the fact that you had um it was really all about taking whatever was around you and then making it in, making it into something so there was parameters but there wasn't as long as you can make nice. it a thing it became yeah. a new style whether i mean you got like b-boys who who watch martial arts and they watch gymnastics and they put it all together and boom all you all of a sudden you have this brand new dance called break dancing or um, <laughs> DJs who took records from disco to funk to jazz to dance hall and then boom all of a sudden you have this music that goes along to the graffiti writers um, and then to the MCs just being able to control the crowd by words that you can come up with and move the crowd and have them into an engage man I just I was just fascinated by all of that from a from an early age because every element gave you a creative canvas that you could work in and and um and either you know dictate a message or just be there to, to practice and learn something brand new. Yeah. And there was never any point where it had to level off. You could just keep going up and up because there was nothing that really defined it at that point. It was it was only up from there. And so, yeah. uh, but as I got into it, I would say there was, uh, I remember the first song I heard on the radio that I was like, man, what is this? It is, uh, you, there's this group called UTFO had a song called Roxanne came on the radio and it was just, I don't know what the, the beat was just so hard and they came on and they were just doing these crazy raps over the top of it. And then that's when I was locked in. It's like, man, I want more of this. So yeah. out cousins that had records that would let me borrow the, the some vinyl. Um, but then it came this era that they kind of termed as the backpacker era to where you had guys like black groups, like black star uh, tribe called quest leaders in the new school. And to me, that just peeled back a whole new level, a whole new layer of what, the music could be. I grew up out West in Arizona. So a lot of what we had, you know, coming from that side was more of the, like the NWA, the EZE, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the kind of more gangster rap music. <clears throat> Obviously we, we had East coast music as well, but I was like, I knew I couldn't bring, you know, easy -E in the house and play it <laughs> as an eight or nine year old. So I was like, man, let me find something a little more safe. So that's, that's how I got into the, the the East, the West Coast guys like Far Side and all these other groups, man. Yeah. Uh, just always appreciated the originality, the creativity. Yeah, um, and so just pulling from all of those things to answer your question. Yeah. Uh, pulling from all those things, I think, was just inspiration in itself. <laughs> um, but at this point, I have guys that I just appreciate the craft of what they do, how they write. Um, and for as long as they've been doing it. So you got guys yeah. like a common um, guys, like a black thought uh, guys that have been doing it for, you know, probably two or three decades now and haven't lost a step or lost a yeah. beat in doing it. So, man, mm. I, I think it's easy to put all those together. And I, I could see, you know, like you said, a little bit of track called quest, Talb Quelly, a little bit, um, even some of the, like a comment. I, I saw that a lot. And I hear that a lot. Yeah. Uh, obviously I'm a more partial and no disrespect comment. I love him, but more partial to you, but yeah, I, I can, I can see that. So Dan, yeah. you want to take yeah. four and you're going to hit both of them with that one. So, yeah, this is for both of you. Uh, now that, you know, all the inspiration you guys have had growing up and, and listen to your stories that kind of helped you shape the kind of music you make today. Now, moving forward, what do you guys see 
and coming up to the end of the year, you know, I know you guys obviously have collaborated and you've done some great things together. What do you guys see coming for the rest of 2023 into 2024 now? What's on the uh, horizon for you? And we can start with verbs on that. Yeah. So um, as you guys mentioned at the top of the podcast, we've finished an EP entitled Side A. And yep. uh, that was intentional because um, we knew, hey, there's going to be a second part to what's coming after this one, this first one drops. So we're currently in in motion. Um, one, just being, you know, good stewards of the music we just dropped. We have uh, our latest single that we dropped. The last one was called King. So there's mm -hmm. a video coming that's going to follow that up. Um, and then right after that, we're, we're continuing on into side B. We're already one song in on side B. Uh, Petty, I don't know if there's anything else you want to chime in on as we as we sweep into side B mode. It's going to be fine. <laughs> it's going to be fine. Nice. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Man. We, got a, we, we got all the bugs. Well, I won't say the bugs out. Like, we, we've we been friends for over, man, Verz has been over 25 years, bro. Mm. That's crazy. Like That's awesome. Time. Dude. I, my, my bad. My bad. <laughs> it, just, it just hit me for a second. <laughs> but Nostalgia. we've been friends. And it's been a brotherhood, like, and then we just happened to do music together. Mm -hmm. But That's cool. when we actually started doing music together, there was just there was this thing in him and in me for um people kind of mourn the things that they've done, but they we both came to it and said we want to do something new and we want to create something new. We don't want it to be a collab. We don't want it to be, you know, there's there's a lot of guys doing collabs where you have this solo artist and this solo artist and they come together for one project. Um, we both been doing music for a very long time and um, I, we just wanted to create something new. Like even, yeah. I always talk about how even Jesus sent the disciples out two by two. And it's yeah. like for me and even with Elijah, when he was, I was kind of in an Elijah place where I was able to do a whole bunch of stuff, but I was kind of in this desert and God was like, let me pull you up out of here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let me pull you up yeah. out of here. You've you've done some great things. You know, Elijah called out from heaven, fire from heaven, and all this. And then it's just like, you know, he's in the cave. And it's just it. like I was just kind of in this 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 place. And and um God just put me with my brother and we just created something new and different. And mm -hmm. he's actually, you know, been um really pushing me, not just as village king, but as Petty D2. And, and even some of the, in some areas, I've been giving them a little kickback. Like, yo, I, if, if, it, if it ain't Billy King, I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, man. And he's I like, think, he like, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just, I'm just absorbing it, man. I think uh, because V, uh, side B, A was so good. I can't wait to to see what side B because there's such a, I don't even know how to explain. I, I've, because I've, I've trailered it a couple of times. It's something so fresh. There's a reminiscent of, 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 of 80s and 90s, but it's also fresh. Yeah. I mean, I think of fresh things like what, you know, I will say shout out to Connie, how he does so many things with styles and you have this blend yeah. of what you guys are doing. That I just, I just can't put a finger on it. There's no, it is, it is you guys. It is you. It is you. What, and, what I was yeah. thinking is that we created, it was like God would allow us to create something new that's not yeah. the Petty D sound or a Notiverse sound. It's something it's mixed. from both of us brand new. And definitely shout out to Tone Jones, um, yeah. Grammy Award winning producer, man. He's a believer. He's on fire. Yep. He did the whole EP. Um, his sound gave us, challenged us both to write in different aspects, mm. you know, um, verbs that we feed off each other and um, his lyrical abilities, man, it's just bar none. Love it. And he brings the lyrics out of me and then I bring the energy out of him and we just feed off each other. And we don't, there's a, there's a thing where we're both building each other, not just from the musical side, but from the production side. Um, mm -hmm. People give me credit for certain things, man. But I mean, versus picking these tracks, like these is fire tracks. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's good. And so we just, we just feeding off each other. And yeah. there's an energy, like I, like I was saying, um, just to kind of add to you know what to expect from side B, we're creating and new things are coming to us. And so as you guys are getting it brand new from us, it's getting it's coming straight down brand new from us, you know, from us to you. So we're just as excited. We've already re recorded the first single off side B and the music video. So I remember, oh, yeah, wow. I, I can't yeah. wait to see it once you. Well, once we're not get a playing. Chance. I know, I know. Once we get a chance, we're gonna share it, man. Trust me, because you told me about it. A little sneak peek, man. 
Yeah, uh, this this segment's for both of you. I mean, because we'd really love to hear it. Um, we call this an open mic segment. We open okay. the floor up to our guests to kind of uh, ask them if they have any, you know, philosophies or mantras they've carried with them through their careers to kind of get them through either tough times or get them to that next level, you know, the stuff they've, you know, carried with them. With a lot of our um, listeners, they're, they're younger, they're the younger crowd, and they mm -hmm. look up to gentlemen such as yourself. Is there maybe, we'll start with Petty there, is there something that you can kind of give our younger listeners and viewers uh, like a philosophy or a mantra to kind of help them along in their careers as well? Yeah, I, I would actually, yeah, absolutely, man. I would actually say, um, uh, do it scared. And I got that from a, a minister. And um, what that means is some things, a, a lot of people want to do things that they've they've always wanted to do or they feel like they can't do it or fear keeps us from put, really pursuing our dreams. Mm -hmm. And um, what I started doing is doing things that, okay, um, everybody gives these excuses of why, why it wouldn't happen for them or why they can't do it, but really it's rooted in fear. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's almost, it's almost the, the concept of the first time you jump into the swimming pool, you know, and you or jump off the diving board. Yeah. And just just that that fear of, you know, am I going to come up? All of these things racing through your head. But after you jump off and you go, oh, I want to do it again. And then you do it again and then you do it again. Um, and then I've heard people say, learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm, that's um, good. Comfort at not and not and I'm not saying you don't have to be certain levels of comfort in your life, but um, extreme comfort at a certain level. Or, it, comfort is dream can be a dream killer. And because people want to don't want to step out of their comfort zone to do something. And, and I've been doing a lot of stuff like I do it terrified and I do it scared. And I go, yo, that wasn't so bad. And then it, it builds something in me and to do it again. And then what else can I do? What else can I do? And so I would definitely tell young people to to do things that sometimes absolutely terrify you. You know, <laughs> people people put that in when they do stuff like um jumping off, uh, you know, doing the bungee jumping and stuff like that. But a lot of times it's putting out a song or, yeah. you know, drawing something or doing something that that everybody else is not doing. And I would say, um, you know, when you're going through life, because you only get one life, you know, and um, you don't want to look back and say, you know, I had that opportunity. I should have did it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely say um, um, do it scared. Man. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Wow. Verbs, man. Uh, wow. What about you, man? Um, likewise, I think I heard a pastor say this uh, years ago, um, and he's—I believe it went like, "Never let your, never let your talent take you where your character won't keep you." Mm -hmm. And so, just thinking through, <clears throat> you know, whether it's whether it's creatives, whether it's sports, you know, it's easy to like receive a lot of. It's easy for your ego to be inflated because of your ability to do something. Um, but when that happens too quickly and you're not taking the 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 opportunity to allow your character to develop, then you can wind up somewhere where you're not prepared to be. And just as quickly as you went up, you can also go right Damn. back down in the same <laughs> direction. So just, again, not being af afraid or you shouldn't have uh, goals or ambitions uh, that you want to achieve, but make sure you're doing the work because we all have to do it as human beings. Mm -hmm. Make sure we're doing the work to develop our own character um, so when we do get there we appreciate uh where we were able to go because of the work the internal work that that can hold us there keep us treating other people right you know allowing those egos to be deflated and don't mm -hmm. allow pride to puff you up so much that you know you don't want to be the jerk on the top of the ladder who nobody wants to deal with because <laughs> something will happen because inevitably inevitably pride comes before the fall and everybody yeah. that you uh that you um in, interacted with in a negative way you pass all those people right back on your way down so yeah. never allow your your talent to take you where your character won't keep you man wow. I, I, wow. i'm processing the and i would like oh i was saying man the, the this generation of ath athletes and artists is in great hands yeah. and Dana and i know what i love about you both and petty and verbs just both of you we know we're blessed we know what you stand for we know that great people we know what you believe what you stand for but it's also so refreshing that nobody gets left behind with you guys i love that about yeah. you it's like you you will how do i say this that it's it's 
it's one thing to say it, but you guys live it, right? And what you do, yeah. it's it that speaks louder. The actions of what you do, um, the work that you do. I know a lot of the things about the, what you guys are doing for charity. Um, you're you're out there making a difference in the world, not just making yeah. music, but taking music and making a difference with it. And it helps yeah. people. We had a story. I got to share this with you guys before we kind of wrap it up. Petty in uh, verbs. The Joey from Disciple came by a while back. It was February. We're sitting there, and he said, "Man." There's a guy listening to one of their songs. They're listening to, I think it was, I think it's called You're Not Alone. They're sitting there and this guy told us he was listening to the uh, song, was contemplating ending his life, had a bullet in the gun. He says, man, he listened to that song, took it out, brought it to the show, made a necklace and gave it to Joey and says, hey, this is what I was going to use before I heard the song. You keep it. I don't need any more. You guys help me. So what you guys are yeah. doing, uh, what you guys are both yeah. doing is uh, there's times when you help people get through things that are rough. It's It's great, great music, top of the, the genre but it also yeah. it helps people music is powerful so thank you guys yeah. for yeah. believing yeah. in what you're doing and making music that helps us uh yeah. be better Definitely. people if you will you know so yeah. i appreciate that yeah. appreciate, appreciate you man thank, thank you, you. man yeah man dane yeah. do you have anything to add to that man because I, I could go on for days literally man no I'm, I'm still trying to absorb it all taking notes as we've gone along and it's just a lot of nuggets of knowledge i mean man. you know like we were talking about before with verbs you know even at my age, I still learn from gentlemen like you that that carry a message like this to not just the younger generations, but to everybody, mm-hmm. even older guys like myself that can learn something from me that I've mm-hmm. never heard before or, or put in a more succinct way. And it, it let me, you know, bring all of my thoughts into one phrase mm-hmm. that you've said. And, and it just it may be a phrase, but it just so much bigger message when you start digging Man. into what you guys have yeah. said. So I, I love that you guys do what you do. And, and ever since Josh has turned me on to listen to you, I mean, I've been nothing but thankful. So I just want yeah. to extend an extended thanks to you for, for the things that you guys do. Love it. Thank you, man. man. I appreciate you, man. it. We appreciate it. Yeah. Well, well, fellas, I, I will say this because we will give you guys some time back in your night. And so we got, like, so we we got, we have you guys, and we have one more after you. Um, please, this is an open invitation. We call it the alum. Once you come on, yeah. obviously, please come back when we get closer to dropping side B. Let's come yeah, back, and maybe talk about it. Yeah, maybe an album review to. if you'd like. We'd love to do that. Maybe oh yeah, definitely. Man, that'd be great. You know. Brother. Awesome. Yeah, um, the fan, yeah. When we when we put it out, I'm telling you guys, um, we, we've been blessed. I told you, we've had a lot of uh, yeah. artists. We've done things with like Low Cash Cowboys, like I told you about, people from Skillet. We've worked with Chevelle. But when I said that we're bringing you guys on, it was like, it blew up. Like, oh, what? And it was just like, so we had, to, we were like, we got to get it out, man, because we, we only interview people that we're fans of. So we're like, we have to get this out because they want to hear that <laughs> message. And just like you said, I'm glad that you guys are still at the top of your game, man. So yeah. love you, it. Brother man it's a, it's yeah. a definite challenge man it's, it's it's a challenge it's a positive challenge for us yeah because we just want to be better and do things that you know do things that we can be proud of and that the father can be proud of because yeah we're doing the music but for us it's like it's like painting you know we're allowed to paint but it's like because we're individuals we get to use different colors to, to paint a positive message and to paint a, yeah. a message of salvation at the end of the day. And people are not confused mm. on what we believe and confused that man. Jesus is Lord and that Jesus is coming back and that he loves you and yeah. just that love, man. So thank you so much, man. We, we really appreciate it. And just, yeah. um, we, it, it's a blessing to be able to have, uh, outlets, man, and people that really appreciate it, man. And yeah. Really, just thankful, man, for real. I will say this in closing, you guys, uh, I've been working on getting back in the gym and I played Village King and, and Monster probably helped me get through about four or five of my my runs. I'm like, yeah. I got to keep going, man. So ah, thank you guys. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's verbs. It's just it's just enough where it's like it's not too aggressive. Like I can't listen to metal anymore. When I run because I'll speed up. But it's just enough <laughs> tempo. All right, cool. I can run about a 10 minute mile of this. Let's go, man. So thank yeah, you. Guys. Yeah. Man. Keep thank going, you. man. Keep going. Man, yeah. but uh, thank you guys. I'll, we will again. We'll close on this. Please, we'll make it a make it a point to come back soon. Yep. Verbs and Petty, thank you again, gentlemen, for the time yep. of our lives. A bucket list, another one scratched yep. off. We're gonna yes, make sure sir. we do this again soon. And you yes. fellas have a good night, and we'll be in touch yeah. very soon. Thank okay. you, right. thank, thank you, fellas. Thank you. Appreciate God bless. It. Yes, much love, guys. Take care. You guys are welcome to drop off. Thanks, guys. So, Dane, uh, Dane, let me I mean, let me take a minute and catch my breath, Dane. What do you? Wow, how do you? How do you? Help me, Dane. I'm just speechless, man. That was uh, awesome. It's 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 hard to you know absorb it all in the, this amount of time, but uh, you know you learn something from everybody. I mean, you know, as long as they've been in the game and still be at the top of the uh, top of the heap, and learning from them, and, strong, and, and and coming together, two great minds to do 
great music so that talented, has, a, right? has a great message that, you know, you can't help but admire what they're doing in, in this industry and, you know, for us who listen to them. So man. it's a great, it's a great message. I think, man, and it's crazy when you talk about, he said something about do I made some notes too. It's kind of talked about doing it scared and it's true. Yeah. Like that's something we tell our <laughs> athletes a lot, man. We tell, we tell them all the time, Hey, do it, it with, I don't know, not a chip on her shoulder, but don't do anything. Uh, don't do anything just because you're comfortable because you never grow, yeah. man. So yeah. gosh, yeah. That, that, that was just awesome, man. I, I really do. Uh, Village King side A is great, man. I can't wait till they do some more, man. Cause they just keep, they just keep <clears throat> pounding out the hits, man. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll close on this. I love these guys because this is where I stand. We've, we've told everyone from day one, we appreciate what you do, where you come from, whether, whether whatever faith or creed or whatever you stand for, we respect that. Yeah. Um, and that, again, everyone's welcome. Uh, all, all platforms, all of that. But I like what they yeah. do is where they take that, what they believe. And they, there's not a, there's not an enemy in the world to them. Like it doesn't matter yeah. if you agree yeah. with them or not. They've collaborated with many people that don't agree the same with them, but they love everybody. And that's, that's yeah. a human thing where it doesn't matter who it is. Everybody can come together and something about that just it just drew me to these guys, man. So um yeah. I, I don't know. I just I can't say enough. And he went <laughs> and Verb Verb's been old school for a second. Dude, I was growing up listening to what they did with DC Talk. I grew up listening to them. Grits. That was the first hip hop album I was allowed to have as well. And then when he dropped <laughs> his, I'm I'm a 12 year old kid. I'm I'm jamming to when he put out his first album, and it was 2000 mm-hmm. when I got I got a hold of it, his little demo tape. So just positive, these people have shaped generations now and now they're still doing yeah. it man some of the some of the yeah. founding fathers of just that positive movement so wow bucket bucket list check yeah. off man so <clears> loved thank it. you loved it well and, and like Dana, i say their message you can take to our our kids that we coach and, and it's great and tell them to listen tell them to listen and this is what you know you can do with positivity and influence man. people and you can get to the top of the heap like they are did you see what I meant when he's – they don't meet a stranger? They probably could have went two more hours because yeah. they're so kind. Oh, yeah. They're just and, great and, guys, and man. Would have gladly done it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So, Dana, I'll say this, man. That was another uh, – I was glad to check off that bucket list out of it. Yeah. That was awesome. Do good it point. scared. Um, I love the fact that he said Terminator. It was just a great one. So, I'm going to leave some <laughs> of that for the editing. Just a cool guy. So, we got one more tonight, guys, after this. Again, thank you, Verbs and uh, Petty. Yeah. Petty, we just say we'll be Petty. in touch. There you go. We'll definitely have it back on. We got one more, guys, to end the weekend. So coming up here in a little bit, we'll catch our breath. Uh, Dan Johnson, this this guy right here, I'm telling you, has worked with – talk about people that have a story to tell. So he's worked with a band uh, called Love and Death. Their lead singer is Brian Welch from Corn. Took a moment, talks about his story, returned his life around, was at the point of – almost death from overdose, turned his life around, made love and death. And Dan was a drummer for that band. Amazing. Dan also worked for a very long time with one of my favorite rock bands. I mentioned them red. This band is fantastic. They kind of started in the early two thousands and have done that kind of, uh, theatrical rock synthesizer thing. And then now he's working with a new project called there is no us. Uh, and it's basically just on and on and on everything that dan touches turns to just musical gold he's a great drummer um he's up there with yogi just one of those great talents so dan's stopping by he's actually running late right now otherwise he'd be on he's at a gig he's leaving the gig to then get with us and do the episode it's really cool so um that'll be the nightcap i can't wait so uh again i'm not speechless very often but that one had me speechless so i want to say thank you again to verbs and petty uh don't forget that we love you and dane thank you for listening